If you're having trouble getting started on an aluminum fillet weld, this is for you. This is the mistake a lot of people make. I'm doing several things wrong here, mainly too long of an arc. I'm even losing some argon shielding. The arc plume is big and so it melts the aluminum wire before it even gets to the puddle. I'm not necking the molten metal down into the root of the joint and so I'm getting lack of fusion and I'm just starting off on the wrong foot with too big a weld. Let's do it better. Using a tapered tip and a much tighter arc and trying to add the minimum amount of filler wire when I get the two members joined and not being in a hurry to get going, let it neck down, let it go into the root of the joint and then also keeping your torch angle to a minimum. This is such an important simple lesson that I'm going to go over it one more time in slow motion here at half speed. You light up, start your arc, hold your arc fairly tight, direct your arc to where both members are, are puddling a little bit, you got that wet shiny area, then dab a little rod to join them. Now wait about a second. Now that you have the two members joined, heat can conduct evenly and you want to give it about a second to do that. Now you don't want to jam too much rod in there. You want to maintain that tight arc length. You kind of want to meter that filler rod in there as precisely as you can, adding just enough metal to make a flat bead, not convex, not concave. I don't always use clear cups, but I'll tell you what, they really make a difference. I was very skeptical on clear cups. Back when I saw the first one at Fabtech, I thought, what the heck's up with that? I started using them thinking that it was gonna make a better arc shot, we could all see a lot of detail a little bit better. I learned really quickly, it helps me see. See, I got these glasses, bifocals, I wear a cheater in my helmet as well. I, I could use a little help sometimes seeing everything, seeing where I'm going. So I put together a kit, a new kit called the Navigator Kit, and I've got a clear cup version. Right now I wanna show you some examples of using every clear cup that's in that kit, seven, eight, 10, and 12. Of course, there'll be some learning and tips along the way. Let's do it. The Navigator Kit comes with four through eight ceramic cups. So first thing we're gonna do is run a bead with this standard ceramic gas lens cup. The pink ceramic gas lens cup does a great job on aluminum, plenty of cleaning action. I just can't see very far in front of me. Sometimes I don't really need to see very far in front of me, but sometimes I do. Look at the difference here. How much farther I can see in front of me and behind me and all around me. So that's, that's the difference that a clear cup makes. It kind of illuminates everything and helps you see better. Here's another bead with a pink cup. You can see the arc shot right here. The number six gas lens is doing a great job here. I just can't see all around like I can with a clear cup. These are the clear version. I've got a ceramic version of this kit too, but this video is about the clear version. Let's take a look at the number seven here. A number seven is a good choice for aluminum and steel. You see how far ahead I can see. It just really lights everything up like a light bulb. In fact, it's a lot like a light bulb. It's a tungsten up inside glass. It lets us see a lot of detail, and that's why I use it for shooting videos. Let's take a look at some carbon steel beads now using the number 7 cup. About 129 amps. This is about a quarter inch steel. It's just some practice beads. But when you are overlaying beads and trying to overlap that previous bead by a half, being able to see exactly where everything is is a, is a pretty big benefit. The sweet spot on argon flow rate seems to be about 14 to 21 with the number 7 cup, whether you're doing steel or aluminum. It's just that for aluminum you don't want to go too high. Look at how this is lighting up that little scribe line that I'm trying to follow there. Then there is the number 8 Pro Clear Cup, also a great cup for aluminum as well as stainless steels and carbon steels. If you've been watching my videos very long at all, you know I'm a big advocate of welding aluminum just to get better all around at TIG welding anything. And that's because of the filler rod hand. You have to feed so much more filler with aluminum that it gets that filler rod hand up to speed quickly. And then when you go back to welding steel or stainless steel, it's just much easier. The 8 Pro lets you use a little bit longer stick out than the 7 does. And that's a benefit, but the main benefit, I think, is just the way it lights everything up. I think you can see that right here. This is really just illuminating the path. I can see the cleaning action next to the bead. I can just see everything so much better. This is carbon steel 
square tubing. I have found a lay wire technique using a 332 rod really helps keep the puddle clean on square tubing because you won't melt through it and pull the oxides in to the bead. Now we're going to step up to a little bit different arrangement here. This is the Jazzy 10 clear and it's got the secondary double diffuser in there. That is a difference maker, especially for things like aerospace test welds. Here's a, a weld in a fixture. It's a practice weld on regular carbon steel, which is actually a really good practice, but, but look how it's just lighting everything up. I can see where I'm going, I can see where I've been, and as I weld up to this end tack here, I can see it a good half inch to an inch before I get to it, and I can prepare for it, and I can start getting ready to let off on the foot pedal. But here's what I'm talking about. When I'm coming up on that tack, I watch it as soon as that puddle runs into that tack, I start backing off that amperage and back up the arc a little bit. And this prevents blowing the end away and it prevents defects. Now we're going to watch that again in slow motion because I think that's another valuable lesson there. Right here I start watching really closely the front of that puddle. And I get off a few amps before it runs all the way to the front. And then back up as I taper off as low as the machine will go, which in this case is about 5 amps. Great gas shielding and great visibility. The number 12 clear cup comes in this kit with the titanium cover, but you can remove it if you want to look through the cup or keep it on there for a little added protection. You'd be surprised at how long a stick out you can use with this cup at about 25 to 30 CFH. You don't, you don't always need to look through the clear part of the cup, but you can when you need to if you're welding up into a corner or if something's in your way and you just can't get your head in there right. Look at that good shielding right there. That's a big argon envelope. Let's look at a puddle from a little bit different angle here. Same Furic 12 clear cup. When you have really good gas shielding, even on plain carbon steel, which is what I'm welding here, the puddle just flows easier. And not only that, but it flows with less amperage a lot of times. When a puddle gets sluggish with oxides, a lot of times it requires a few more amps to move the puddle. The kit I just showed you was for 17, 18, and 26 style torches. It's got a Furic adapter kit inside of it. This is the 920 version. It has this, this regular 45V44 gas lens for 920 torches. The great thing about a kit is you know everything will fit your torch. You just have to identify which torch you have. We've got plenty of information on the store on how to do that. Hey, thanks for watching. I really appreciate your support.